Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is episode 17 and the last standard episode of Building a Scrapbuster Idea Book. After this, I'll have a few days off and then I will take all of these bits and pieces that we've created with our scraps and put them together in a somewhat cohesive idea book. I will leave room at the end of the idea book so that if you come up with other ways to use scraps, you can tuck them in as well. So, all right. Today's projects are mini book, notebook, and page reinforcements or borders. Now, we've already made mini books. I already showed you because somebody had asked and I showed you. But they are one of the easiest and most versatile items that we make and or that we can make. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways. Now, in the video that I showed you, I showed you by sewing it up, up the seam to make a little notebook right, or to make a little book. And I showed you a couple different way, or sizes and styles, but it's essentially the same thing. You take some paper, you sew down the middle. And that works really well. But you can also do, you know, use kind of your edged punches, if you will, and make like a little notepad kind of a thing. That's also along the same lines. Not the same thing quite as a scrap pad, but along these lines with the books. And um, that's just another option. And... Uh, uh, there's a couple other ways you can do it too. Now you'll notice maybe that when you do books, because you've got a seam in the middle where the spine would be, you're going to have a little bit of a gape, no matter what you do. I always tuck these into pockets so it's not as noticeable, but they open a little bit. And even using staples or a seam, a stitching it by hand, you're going to get the same idea. You can get a fairly flat book and one way to do that is instead of having them attached here at where they we folded them over, you cut them and you use washi or something else and you sew half of the pages to one side, right? And then half of the pages to the other side, right? So you don't have that big bulky spine in the middle. And then you use a bit of washi to combine the two and then you are going to get and I'll try to show you really quickly then you're going to get a more flat book so that is an option and another option is to use a staple you know just a staple binding book and there's the Tim Holtz tiny attacher and that is um let's see if you guys can see that the Tim Holtz tiny attacher or any mini tot staple it's about a quarter of an inch long and you can see it's I can't even measure it, but it's it's a little bit thinner profile than a standard staple. And this would be a standard staple, which is one half inch, and it's just a bit wider. Benefits of a standard staple is most of the time you've got a bit more depth in your arm and you can get long arm staplers to reach all the way in. Whereas the Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher, its depth, depth is just a little less than two inches. So if you're making a tiny little book, this could work great. And in fact, let's just do that real quick. So I've got this one set up, right? Just a piece of cardstock folded over. And then this is just some um, masking paper, a painter's masking paper that I had extra, and like an offcut basically. And I cut these to mostly size. I didn't do it perfectly. And as yes, you can see, I didn't I didn't measure it perfectly because and why bother? for this kind of a project. It's just not necessary. It doesn't have to be exact. All right, so I put them in and I hold them in place mostly. And I, let's see, I made it just, oh, I think it'll work. And then I will use my tiny attacher. Can you see here? And I'll put two staples in. And so I've got the staples in the center of my booklet, right? And I've got my booklet and now I can just trim my pages. And I've got, I probably could use just a standard trimmer with this, but you've got a little bit of wiggle room this way. And um, you can just trim a smidge off or as much as you need. So you don't have to worry about making the length of your pages perfect. You can come back later on and trim them down. All right. And there is another little booklet, right? But with this time with a staple spine. And it works just as well. So if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't want to sew on your little booklets, um, and you can also hand stitch. And 
I'm going to show you that. Uh, no, I'm not. I guess I could, and I should probably show you a super duper duper simple pamphlet stitch. Just in for the sake of saying that you don't have to have a machine, you can use staples, you can use a pamphlet stitch to put them together. But this one is one, it's a glue method of making a book where you don't have to use any stitching at all if you choose not to. All right, I am going to, these are my little pages. I am going to cut them in half. Maybe I'm going to cut them in half. Here we go. So I've got my halves correct. And a lot of times I will just do this and clamp them. See, I use these, I just keep them in a little bowl or a ramekin on my desk because I use them so often. Ah, uh, did I do that straight? Probably not, but there we go. All right, now I could conceivably put this to this, right? And go to my sewing machine and sew this right here, okay? That's an, this is another option for a flatter option. You know what? Do I want to do that? Do you guys want to hear me do that? Hmm, maybe I will. Because it does, oops, it does give you a flatter option and I wanted you to see that. And I don't have any samples because I shipped out some journals today where I had the samples in there. I used it for that. All right. Well, okay. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to sew these really quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right. Just a standard straight stitch and I make it a little bit wider. Remember, the closer the stitches are together, the more easily the paper tears. I'm not going to back stitch or do anything else. I'm just going to stitch. All right. I'm done. It's just that quick. And I'll just grab another scrap to show you the one more thing I was going to show you where you don't have to uh, sew it up. Or now I'm losing my train of thought, darn it. I was going to show you one more thing where you don't have to sew at all. But then I got sidetracked, squirrel, and did this. All right, so I've got two sec sides to my book, right? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take some washi. Now, as much as I love the thick fabric washi, it's great. It gets a little too bulky for this, and you're going to defeat the purpose of trying to keep it mostly flat. So regular old standard washi, and I guess this doesn't really matter. Do I have an upside down or a right side up? This is all over the place, so that doesn't matter. And this one does matter. All right, so I want this white right side up. So I'll go that way and this way. Okay. I'll take a bit of the, maybe, maybe I'll take a bit of the washi. Now, you could have glued or stapled that, I suppose, but I don't think it would have worked as well. All right. I am going to put a little bit of glue over where I put the sewing machine line. I'm assuming I'm in focus here. A little bit of glue over the sewing machine line or the sewing, sewing line. Okay, out of the way. And I'll line this up on my work surface because I want it to be about a quarter of an inch. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but because my washi tape, this washi tape is three quarters of an inch. So I want it a little bit more than that, actually. And um, this one has these nice little stars on it, so it makes it easy to line it up straight. And I will glue that down and press. And then I'll clean up the glue because it does smudge, but that's okay because you kind of want it to. That's going to hold this in place. Now I'm not going to quite have them touch, but close. I mean, I want them to be close to touching, but not quite touching the two sides. And then I don't know that I made this long enough. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll come back with another piece and just put it down. But here, I think this might have been long enough. Well, we'll find out, won't we, to touch. Nope, not quite. Well, that's okay. That's an easy fix. I'll just put a little bit down there. Because that's the inside of my book. All right. Now, this is what I was, the whole point of trying to show you. 
if you look at this book and this book, you're going to get a mutt. And I have it. This has more pages in it. And it um, has the sewn lines. But you'll see you get a much thinner profile. Wow, well, can you see that? You get a much thinner profile with this method. See how much more that gapes? It's still going to do it a little bit because the pages are thicker than the spine, right? But the wider you make your spine, the less likely, the more likely your book is to lay flat. So if you're wanting your book to lay flat, there is that option. All right. Now, I know what I was going to show you. See, I knew I'd eventually get back there. I am going to show you the pamphlet stitch. And I, I feel silly to even doing it because so many people do it so much better than I. But for the sake of showing people that want to see how to do it, if they don't have a machine and they do want that sewn-in look, I will do it really quickly. And I'm just going to do these two pages together. All right pamphlet stitch. The, I'm going to do the three hole. When I bind a journal using the pamphlet stitch, I almost always use the five hole simply because I think it catches it a little better, but it's not a requirement. You can do whichever you want. And if you want your tail on the outside of your spine, start from the back. If you want your tail on the inside of your spine, like if you want to put beads or something and dangle it. And in a perfect world, I measure this and I make sure that they're evenly spaced. And a lot of times I will make a template so to match so that I know exactly where my holes go. But for this little booklet, we're going to call close enough good enough. Now, I will tell you this. If this were really thick, if I had several layers of paper, right, and maybe a journal spine or something on here, I would use a bigger, thicker pokey tool or my awl and I would pre-poke all my holes. And then I pre-poke them and then I clamp them together. And I do that simply to make my life easy when I'm binding the book because it can get really bulky really quick. So I poke all of them together like this and I'll use a cradle or something if um, I'm, I'm binding a journal. But for the for a sake of a book, and we're gonna assume I have a cover on here because I just didn't put one but you start in the center. So I'm working from the, with the assumption that I want my tail to be in the inside of my book. And go in through the center hole, out and around the back, up through the top hole, and pull it snug, but don't super tighten it, right? This is a book, not a journal. And then I'm going to come back down into the center hole so on the on the back you've got a completed stitch and in the center you have a completed stitch all right then i'm going to because my needle's in the outside or the back of the book i'm going to come back around and go through that pre-poked hole into the center of the book and now well, what do i do now here's this is my press preference i'll come back through that center hole one more time so i've got one thread on the outside, one thread on the inside. I will loop my thread, my needle under my thread, and then I will bring it back down to that same hole. Now I've caught it, so it's not going to be just like pulling pulling the thread back through. It's some, something is hold, there to hold it in place, which is why I went around that thread. All right now I have both pieces of both ends of my thread in the center I want to pull it tight but not so tight that it bends it and then I'll just tie it in a knot now you can use this is just embroidery floss that I just literally pulled from my my pin cushion um, you can use wax linen which is great but again this is just a little book we're not sewing in a journal and um I'll drop it this way. Now, if I wanted to put beads on these, I, again, I think I've shown it before, but just in case I haven't, I put a little bit of glue, of whatever glue, art glitter glue, reptile glue, barely there glue. I'm trying to remember what else people use. Put a little bit, and then I roll the edge of my string, and it doesn't matter if I'm using embroidery floss or twine or wax linen. You can do the same thing. And I just basically make myself a needle. And that way, if what I want to put... Um, beads on the end of this it is much much easier to string them and i'll do the same thing on the other side 
and it doesn't take much. And then I just roll it between my thumb and finger until it makes a point. And now I've got two needles I can put my beads on and then I'll tie my beads on. And when I'm done, I just snip off that ugly needle point and it's done. And that is how, without using a sewing machine, you can still make yourself a little book. And it's got the little pamphlet stitch on the end. All right, so those are mini books and notebooks. Page reinforcements and borders. And what I mean by that is, okay, a lot of us, many of us use old book when we're building junk journals. And book page is one of the easiest things to use and the most um, easily accessible. And people just starting out, I highly, highly encourage you when you're looking at books and trying to find what you need or what you want or building your stash or that kind of a thing. Dictionaries make the best options. Uh, whether you're looking at a standard dictionary, whether you're looking at a different language dictionary, different years, different colors, um, uh, you know, along with the dictionary is a th thesaurus. The thesaurus is another great source. Any of those, because the paper is thinner, number one, the um, words come in different size fonts in different colors, depending on where you got it and when it was made. And it just kind of gives you a whole lot of options. So when I say page borders or page reinforcements, here are a couple samples of borders. And this is just book page, super thin book page. So it adds almost nothing to your profile. And I'll tear, I'll get con contrasting papers and I'll tear the outsides and, and then maybe sew the center. And that's one option. And then if I want a little bit more interest, I can add a stamp or a Tracy label or something else that just adds very little bulk. And I've still got all this room over here to write, but I've added a little bit of interest, okay? Or I can use a vellum sticker or one of these clear transparency stickers and maybe a little tiny bit of washi there and put it on. And again, no bulk, but I've got a little bit of interest on my page. And these are just scraps. These are torn off scraps. I can do the reverse. Here I had the torn edges on the outside. I used the same paper, but now I've got the torn edges on the inside. So I've got a straight line here. For some reason, you are wanting a straight line. And this one I sewed with a zigzag stitch. And this one I didn't sew at all. I just used my glue stick and I glued it right on. It adds nothing bulk wise. And again, if I wanted to, I could come in and put a washi sticker on here and maybe a little piece of washi tape to you know, tie off the sticker. And I've got all this writing room, but I've added a little bit of interest. So those are two different kinds of borders. Another thing you can do with borders, and I'm not going to take the time to do it, but it's almost, almost like I do with my clusters. So whatever paper brand I'm using or whatever paper packer, uh, leftover strips from my digital kit or something like that. I don't know how many little itty bitties here. So I'll tear up um, a bunch of these little ones, right? I'll ink it and then I'll lay it on the edge of the page, whether it's the inside or the outside of the page. And maybe I've got a little bit of ribbon and I'll put a little bit of ribbon on there. And maybe, um, maybe I like this one and I'll put, uh, I want different lengths and I'll tear little bits or uh, maybe I want some more of this newsprint, right? And I'll make a border of all these little bits and then I'll either glue or sew it right down. So I've got a border or an interesting edge on my page, just using scraps. And that works better, obviously, when you're, um, you've already assembled your book or you assembled your journal and you've got some writing pages and you just feel like you just want a little bit more on those writing pages. That's a great way to utilize scraps. And it, gets, it doesn't really add much bulk because you can make your th layers thin. So that's a couple different ways to do page borders. And what I mean by page reinforcements is this. Many times, especially when you're looking for books, one of the things that I generally look for is I open it up and am I going to be able to save the spine? And sometimes I don't care because I really want the, you know, the Italian dictionary that's hard to find or what have you. But a lot of times I want to be able to use both sides of this page. Now, obviously, I can, um, this is a, uh, what was this, a 1946 dictionary, I think? Yeah, 1946 dictionary, John C. Winston. But uh, one, I like the little holes that you get from where it was sewn. I think those are interesting, and they add interest and texture to your page. But also, if I'm wanting to 
make it a double-sided page in my journal, I can do this. But now look here, look how thin that is. If I were to put it in my journal like this, it would probably tear out. So this is what I'm talking about, page reinforcements. You can use a piece of washi, but if, and that's, that's a great option. But if you don't want to use your washi, if you're wanting to use something else, well, you can use other bits of paper. So I probably wouldn't choose this one, even though I really like those holes, those torn holes. Just that extra little bit of paper is going to make a lot of difference. So before I sew this into my signature, I would just glue this piece right down. Maybe I would choose a whiter piece to add some contrast. Piano roll is another fabulous one. If you've got piano roll, um, you know, tear that down, ink up the edges to add some contrast, and we're gonna assume this is a smaller page. And again, it doesn't add much bulk at all, but it reinforces the strength of your page. And these are scraps. These are torn off leftover bits. So save some of those to use as page reinforcements. It adds interest and it adds functionality when you're putting your signatures in your page. All right, that is all I have for today. If you've got extra ideas, things you normally do with scraps, please, please feel free to th throw them down below and we can make a spot for them in our journals because I always tell my students, we learn best from each other. You learn best from the people that you work with and interact with the most. Um, so I love learning from you every bit as much as I love teaching. If you've got ideas, please feel free to share them. All right, uh, give me a couple days to assemble the idea book and I'll be back to show you how I did it and take care. Happy creating.